All right, cool. Uh, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, my name is Chris, and I am here with Senior U, and we're going to talk about artificial intelligence. So I take it you've all been seeing a lot about this in the news lately, and have for a while, and maybe you're wondering what's going on. So, so the the uh, the goal of this talk is really just to give you just a, a brief update on what you know, kind of bring you up to speed. It's not meant to be really in depth or anything. But any questions you have, feel free to ask. We can talk about anything. This is going to be a, a, a you know relatively short presentation. It depends how long it goes. And then we'll do some Q and A. We'll also do some demonstrations so you can kind of see it in action. Start thinking about things you might want to ask it. Um, I know it's hard to imagine what you would want to ask it at this point, but as we go through, if you start thinking as I talk about what it can do, if you come up with an idea when we get to it, I'll be asking for you know some some ideas of uh, things to to, uh, to to show. So, just a quick word about Senior U. We do workshops and different talks at senior centers, uh, libraries, and 55 and older communities. Um, the owl's name is Huey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we do lots of talks. We have lots of things coming out. I don't know, was anyone here for my last talk here when I did about UFOs? Was anyone, a couple of you in the room? Okay, all right, so a whole new crowd here. Uh, except for a few, all right, okay. We talk about a lot of stuff. So we have, uh, besides um, Senior U, there's also Therapy Gardens, Therapy Kitchens, and Home Solutions. These are all things you'll be hearing about in the coming, in the coming months and weeks and so forth. All right, so our topics for today. I'm just going to talk about artificial intelligence, really just what it is, a very brief history of it. We're not going to go in depth, how it can be used in some different fields, what's exciting about it, what might be a little bit scary about it. You guys might have some concerns that you want to see, we want to talk about some of the dangers, Q&A. Uh, it's just meant to bring us all up to speed. So, so what is AI? Artificial intelligence. It's the idea of getting a machine to simulate how a human intelligence works. And we, we as a society have been getting closer and closer to this over the years. You know, back in when, when computers first started, you know, they filled up rooms, obviously, and they could do very simple things well. Over the years, the computers have gotten more advanced and can do all sorts of things, but they're still very limited in that they have to have the information given to them, very specific instructions. We're still kind of there. Even the artificial intelligence that we have here, that we have now, that you hear about all the time, it isn't artificial intelligence in the true sense, and we'll, we'll get to that, but it is powerful, and it is computers and machines that can do stuff that years ago you wouldn't even have dreamt about it. But it's just the idea, artificial intelligence. How can we get a machine to be able to think and, and do what we do? Which is quite a lot, what we do with this little, little chunk in our head here. Can we get a machine to do the same? Um, can, we get, can we teach a machine to think like a human being? And that's the challenge is because we're still trying to learn how we think. Like, how is it that we can think things? How is it that this little piece of matter in our heads, we can have all these thoughts and you know there's studies into how the brain works. So trying to put that in a machine as well uh, is just an extra layer of complication. Um, now I want to talk about this real quick. It's not directly related, but it kind of is. It was from 2012. You wouldn't be thinking about AI in 2012, but I don't know if anyone remembers this story that when everyone started using those shopper cards, you know how at a lot of places you can get that little thing you scan in so they know exactly what you buy, so they can send you coupons and things like this. Well, a father was irate when his teenage daughter got from Target got coupons, including a lot of like diapers and like basically things as if you were gonna have a baby. And he went to Target and he went crazy about why are they sending this to, to them. Turns out Target knew his daughter was pregnant before she knew before he knew, because it had been tracking her shopping, and through their analytics, it realized that her, what she had been purchasing was changing. And what they discovered was, in going through their analytics, when someone is pregnant, they might not even know it, but a lot of times, a strong scents will bother them, and they'll start switching to unscented, 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 uh, you know, soaps and things like that, and other purchases. And so, what they found out was that the computers, the, their algorithms, were able to figure out when people were expecting. In some cases, before those very people, they didn't even know. It's just because their their habits have changed. So, so this story is from 2012, but it even illustrates back then that there's so much information about us that if you can that if you can parse it in the right way, 
you can get a lot out of it. Now that's before we get to this, where we are now with artificial intelligence. So if this was in 2012, and what was, you know, not too long ago, but long enough ago that the computer power was much different. If it could do that back then, think about where we are now in 2023. So it's just something to think about that, that story. So how did we get here? I'm going to give you just a very brief history of AI. Really started in the 50s. Um, simple, you know, the computers were so big at that point, but the idea, Dartmouth College, they had a, 1956 had a conference where they brought some of the greatest, you know, minds of that time to say, how can we get machines to think like humans? How can we get to that artificial intelligence? So that's where it really began as a field. And through the 50s, and then we move into the 60s, the first research laboratories were, um, were coming about. And there was a chatbot that was developed in 1966 called Eliza. It was a very simple bot that you could chat with and have a conversation with. Now the computing power we know back then, you know, the computers were huge. Uh, computing power was not anywhere near. So there was always limitations to how fast AI could come about just because our computers weren't that powerful. They just, they just didn't have what they needed. In the 70s, it got a little bit you know, more advanced. The computers were starting to get better, but that's when the first robots, they started these autonomous robots and a lot of these machine arms. Natural language processing became kind of like a way of getting computers to the way they coded them to try to get them to think. It was in its very early stages. But again, through the, through the 70s even, there wasn't a lot of progress because the computers just didn't have the power. In the 80s we saw, that's when you started to hear about, remember when manufacturing arm, like that, that's when the whole worry about, hey, now there's gonna be on the assembly line, there's gonna be these robots that do things and that's, you know, they could do these very simple uh, motions and, and that's, you know, you have machines that could do a very simple thing, like putting a cap on a, on a you know, jar of pickles. And it could do that very well, but it, it couldn't react if something went wrong. It was very limited. Um, the 90s is when things really started to pick up in AI is because computers started to get more powerful. The computing power started really, this is when they could really look into AI and, and really be able to take these big machines and fill them with data, but even then it was slow going. Now, 2000s is when we got into, they started, I don't know, have you ever seen some of these robots? They've been working with robots for years. I, I, I think it's Asimo, is a Honda made this, this like walking robot. And uh, it's funny, in the, in the, even like the late 80s and early 90s, I remember there was this like thought process that we were all gonna have like robot servants soon. It, it made it sound like it was right around the corner. It was not. Um, but what does it all mean, right? And so I'm just gonna talk about some of, the, some, some of the things about AI, some of the key terms. Machine learning, it's just the study of how we can, uh, it's a type of AI that, that uses computers and like you give tons of data and you get the machine to learn. You get the machine to actually take the data and whatever you're giving it and actually be able to draw conclusions on it. They've been trying to work on this forever to try to get machines to be able to um, almost work independently. Deep learning is just what they call, you might hear this, it's just these complex algorithms which is meant to mimic how we think. How do we as humans put connections together? They try to, deep learning is where they try to um, simulate that in a computer. Natural language processing, this is what you're encountering a lot today with like chat GPT. This just means, it's, it, they'll, they'll describe it like this, they'll say, when you ask chat GPT a question, it predicts what the next word should be by its base of knowledge. Which sounds weird when you say it's just sort of figuring out what the next word in the, in the uh, that's how it understands what you're saying and, and how it responds back. Predictively, to, through its calculations, to get the response you want, what would be the next word after, you know, the first one, then the third word, and the fourth word. Yeah, and when you can text back and forth with it. it. But it sounds so simple to say that it's just predicting what the next word would be. But the, the scary part is, is the machine, in order to do that, has to understand what is being said. And that's the part of it that is happening now that what's kind of scary is some of the AI scientists will tell you they're not 100% sure they understand how it works. They know it's working and they know kind of what they're doing, but some of like how it's making these leaps, how the, mach how the machine is understanding some things. I've heard some anecdotes about talking with ChatGPT that you could tell it a joke 
and it would tell you why the joke is funny. <coughs> Which, if you think about it, is not in the basis of the joke. Like, you'd have to really understand humor for it to say why that is funny. That, uh, I, earlier I had a slide where it said, do these circuits make me look fat? And somebody was messing around with ChatGPT, and they said something like to the, to the effect of, um, you know, does this prompt make me look fat? And the, the ChatGPT says, you know, that's a nonsensical question. I said, okay, well, what if I said, what if, does this dress make me look fat? And I was a, I was a wife asking that of the husband. And ChatGPT said, uh, some questions are not actually looking for a yes or no answer. They're actually an emotional intelligence to test to determine that if the person understands the right response to the question. Like it understood the intricacies of that question outside of the very simple thing of it. So that natural language that it understands what's being said and the intent behind it is complicated because words can change depending on how they're used. I'll give you a perfect example. If you said the trophy would not fit into the suitcase because it was too big, you would understand intellectually the trophy wouldn't fit in the suitcase because it was too big. Oh, you must be talking about the trophy. The trophy's too big, it won't fit in the suitcase. But if you said that same sentence, the trophy wouldn't fit in the suitcase because it was too small. Now the too small is referring to the suitcase. Now, but you'd have to kind of understand spatial relations. You'd have to understand a lot behind it to understand because just flipping the word too big, too small, it changes the structure of a sentence. And that's the idea is how does the machine know this? How does it understand what is being said? And that's kind of the, the power of it uh, and a little bit of the scariness of it. Um, now this is the general, this is the goal. When you hear about AI and artificial intelligence, it's it's machines that can think, but they can think about limited things they've been programmed to do. And when they're not doing that task, they're not really doing anything else. The idea of artificial general intelligence, and this is the one they're still shooting for. This is the one that scares everybody. You know all those scary scenarios about AI taking over? It's the general intelligence that they worry about because this is AI that can just think. You don't even need to necessarily ask it to do a thing. Once it starts thinking, it starts pondering. And it starts taking in its information. And it starts, that's what the worry is. So a lot of the fear that you hear about now, there are concerns, obviously, about AI, about its impact on our jobs, or impact on our lives, and you know, fraud, we can talk about that, and things like that. But it's the general intelligence, which is the scary part, which is the thing that's, that's making a lot of AI Proponents and opponents, that that's the thing that they, they want to make sure we slow down on. Because if you ever got an, an, an artificial general intelligence, that would just be a machine that just starts pondering stuff. What if it comes with conclusions that we don't, like, we don't love, right? You know, what if it says, wow, this planet's really getting messed up. What is it that's causing all the messed up of the planet? And it looks at all the things and it says, you know what it is? It's these pesky humans. <laughs> Seems like everywhere they go. I mean, they, everything looks nice until then they move in and then they, right. so how do we know that it won't come up with a solution of, well, we want to fix the planet. I can I think we just get rid of this. And that's the fear is that it's an intelligence that isn't us. And it's not necessarily going to have our same values, our same, you know, what we hold, what we hold valuable, what we don't hold valuable. So, so that's the one. We're not there yet. And some people will tell you we're still 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years away from it. And other people will tell you this is right around the corner. The truth is, is that nobody really knows how close this is. With some of the developments that just happened recently in AI, and we can talk about this over the weekend, it puts this into a big question, right, about how soon we'll get this. But So we're not there yet. This is the scary one, but we're not there yet. It's just something to keep in mind. When somebody says artificial intelligence, it's not generally the scary one. The artificial general intelligence is the one that a lot of people are concerned about. All right. So you've probably been hearing a lot about ChatGPT and OpenAI. That is not the only AI that is out there. It's just the one that you've been hearing about the most because it was the first one to kind of hit the public consciousness. Uh, this company that was created called OpenAI released the first you know, AI that people, that your average person could, you can download it as an app. If you have an iPhone or an Android phone, you can go to the App Store and you can download the ChatGPT app and you can use it for free. Um, there is a paid version. I do the paid version because you get a little bit more. You can upload files, you can upload uh, pictures. I can talk about that a little bit. But that's the one you're hearing about a lot, is OpenAI. ChatGP3 is just their latest model and they're, and they're still working on, you know, 
uh, newer versions. What's interesting is that AI, OpenAI kind of started as a nonprofit over the company. They didn't want to have a profit motivation because Sam Altman was one of the founders and there's all the co all the founders of it basically had the same thought, which was if a company's after this for profit, they might skirt uh, concerns, they might, you know, you, you know that when that happens, when somebody's trying to make a buck, they might do something that otherwise would not be a great idea. So they were trying to take the profit motivation out of it. They were only limitedly number of, they were only uh, successful in a small way because Microsoft got involved as a big investor and you know, there's nobody who thinks that there's not a profit motivation at the end of the day at AI, but open AI is what you hear about now. Um, they was founded in 2015. This has all changed now. So over the weekend, let's see if I have it. Actually, uh, I'll get to get to a few more slides now. But over the weekend, there was a big shakeup at OpenAI. And basically, I think all those people on that board now are no longer there. And it has uh, become an entirely different animal. I saw that online. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's getting crazy. But, but anyway, so that's the company you're hearing a lot, ChatGPT and OpenAI. That's the one you're hearing. And the reason why is they were one of the first ones to kind of get it out to everybody. They're not the only one. Um, just ChatGPT, what the GPT stands for is Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. That was the technology that allowed it to, them to train this model to be able to respond and, and think and process information. They loaded it with vast amounts of information. They haven't really shared what they've loaded it with, but a lot. They did a cutoff though, is it doesn't have a lot of information beyond a, whatever cutoff date of their, of their um, when they uploaded all that, all that data. That can cause problems in getting responses too because just because you think it's an AI, it's not necessarily up to date on everything because it's not given that information. Remember, they're a little afraid of just giving it full access to everything because they're trying to train this device in a very methodical way uh, and they're afraid of just sort of giving it tons of data because if it could spin out of control very, very fast. The implications of a, of a technology like this spinning out of control is probably more dangerous than any technology we've ever had access to. And that's the, that's the scary part of this is there's a lot of good that can come from this. Believe me, there is a lot of good that can come from this, but it does have its things that we should at least be concerned about. So when you hear them talking about this on the news, when you hear you know, your politicians getting involved with this, I mean, at least pay attention that they're, somebody's got their hands on the wheel, you know? Um, I, we asked ChatGPT to explain itself. That's, it's always fun to ask ChatGPT, like, what are you? And this is how it worded. This is, comes right from ChatGPT. It says, ChatGPT is an AI program designed to have conversations with people. It uses advanced language processing to understand and generate human-like responses, making it capable of engaging in interactive discussions on various topics. I fully recommend if you, you know, if you want to download the app or go online, you can just go to, um, you can just Google how do I get into ChatGPT. Have a conversation with it. You don't have to have amazing things to bring it. You can just start talking to it as if, it, as if you were chatting with somebody on, on any, uh, any kind of thing. You, it's very interesting to get its responses because it is an intelligence of some sort. It is, it is, it, you know, it is, it's, it's a, it thinks, you know. Um, so this is what happened over the weekend. Basically on Friday, OpenAI suddenly, Sam Altman had been the, like the face of the company. And he had been one, he testified in front of the Senate, he'd been out there on a lot of news shows. A lot of people were very comfortable with his stewardship of OpenAI and ChatGPT because he would always talk about being careful and um, you know, just wanting to make sure we did this in a right way. Um, but suddenly the board, fired him on Friday. And like in a short amount of time, his other co-founder resigned from the, basically resigned from the company. ChatGPT OpenAI over the course of this weekend basically lost all of its people. Because once they fired Sam Altman, uh, basically everyone involved with it who wasn't in that decision, which was most of them, said that we're out. Uh, even Microsoft, which was a huge investor in, in OpenAI, they didn't even know that was happening. So. It's a story that's still de in development. Like we don't know what happened, but basically what just broke this morning is Sam Altman and pretty much everybody from OpenAI has now gone to work for Microsoft yeah, in their I, own division. I was just going to say they've gone to work for Microsoft. Right. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with ChatGPT in the coming, because that was like the, the flagship of AI. 
whether that will become less of a flagship because now Microsoft is going to be, um, you know, doing their own thing. And they're not the only ones. Well, first of all, this is the OpenAI has the uh, a vi video, a visual component. It's an art generator. I'll show, I'll show you a demonstration of this. You can ask it to create an image. You describe what you want and it creates an image like that. The power of being able to do it. Think about all the graphic designers out there who like get paid to make a logo and now you could say to chat, you could say, hey, you know what, make me a logo and make it kind of look like this and it'll give you something. You can say, you know, change it and make it like this. Like you could work. ChatGPT is like having a potential expert on any subject at your beck and call to look things over for you, to read things over, to summarize things, to write things. The power of it is just amazing. And I'll, and I'll show you a little bit of it. Um, ChatGPT, like I said, Microsoft has their fingers in, in uh, OpenAI. Bard is the AI that uh, Google has. And so they say that Google's going to really start because it's probably gonna, they'll probably end up getting some people uh, or some of the resources that ChatGPT. So with, with OpenAI kind of, I don't know, imploding or whatever it's doing, you're going to see you're going to see that more companies getting involved, which might hasten us to what I was talking about earlier, because one of the problems with this is with a lot more companies getting involved, everyone's going to be trying to one up each other. And so that's that's the part we kind of get concerned about is, you know, will they maybe put safety on a back burner? Uh, and then Elon Musk, he was actually one of the original co-founders of, uh, of OpenAI. Uh, he wasn't involved too much beyond the initial call. He had his own things to do. But now he cranked out his, he, he opened up his own AI project, basically, calling it Grok. Have you ever heard that expression, Grok? Grok, Grok, yeah. Somebody will say, like, Grok, I don't Grok that. It's another word for understanding. And if you Grok, it's a it's slang term. But his AI is interesting because... I don't know what, to, I haven't played around with it a lot, but to the extent there were certain questions if you asked ChatGPT, it wanted to avoid controversial subjects. And Elon Musk be, not being one to shy away from controversial subjects, his AI is a little bit more willing to engage in some of those controversial subjects. Not necessarily a bad thing, but there is some concern over it. Um, so you can see there's a lot more players getting involved. So, up till now, if you hear them talking about AI on the news, they probably were talking about ChatGPT, they're probably talking about OpenAI. But I think going forward, you're gonna hear whatever the, the new Microsoft thing, you're gonna start hearing about that. And then these other AIs with, with OpenAI and ChatGPT kinda floundering or whatever's happening, you're gonna see an opening. So you're gonna, there's more to come on this. You're gonna hear a lot more. Um, but anyway, it can perform many tasks much better than humans and can learn from data uh, and, and, and result in real time. Now, it has a high level of accuracy, but not 100% accuracy. And so I think what happened is when ChatGPT first came out, there were a lot of people who just thought, oh, it's a machine. So whatever it must say must, must be true. Um, well, these lawyers use ChatGPT to help them write some briefs. And they must have been crunched for time, and they said, hey, ChatGPT, and they basically used AI to write some briefs, and it cited cases. You know how in laws, you've probably seen it on like the different law shows, they're citing this case and that case to establish. So basically what they found out was that ChatGPT was making up some of the cases that it gave. It was giving them the information they wanted, but in some cases it was hallucinating the information. Um, what else is kind of scary is that the creators themselves can't really tell you why this happens. They certainly didn't program it to imagine things, but for some reason, the, the AI, if it doesn't necessarily know the answer, in some cases it will fabricate the answer. And so you had this sort of like short period of time where everybody was using it to sort of cheat on things. In some cases, people got away with it, and in case of these lawyers, their firm got fined like $5,000, and I, I, they might have been at risk of getting uh, disbarred. So, not everything that comes from AI is flawless. Um, AI art has a big problem with hands. They say when you want to look at a picture, if you want to see if it's AI generated, look at the hands, because for some reason, when AI tries to do the human, it just doesn't get it. And a lot, a lot of times, like, you look and it'll just look weird. There'll be like six fingers or things like that. Like, it won't quite understand how to make it work. And so that's one of the clues that they tell you to look at. A piece of art, you can kind of tell if it's AI generated, if there's, uh, if there's something with that. Um, so 
but you can train it. You can train the AI. You can tell the AI to give you information. You can tell it to cite sources. You can, you can, in, you can um, sort of protect yourself against its inaccuracies, but it does require some effort. Um, but it's through prompts. Basically, the prompts are the way you communicate. It's, there's a whole field of study now that's called prompt engineering. How do you construct the right prompt to ask the AI to do exactly what you want in exactly the way you want to do it? And it sounds simple, and you can have a continuing dialogue with it, like do this, oh no, change it, no, change it, but how do you get to that perfect perfection? Like there are people who are, that, that they're getting into this now, that's their whole job, is figuring out how to word things properly. Because you have to word, you have to make sure, they can, the prompts can be very long. In some cases, they might be paragraphs and paragraphs, and that's just the question you're asking ChatGPT, or, or one of the AI systems. You can put in there the information you want to give it. It's amazing the kind of stuff you can do with it. I've uploaded PDFs, that have like tons of information on it, and it will read it, and it will understand it. Uh, one of the ones I did that I thought was just crazy was, there was a picture I found online, it was somebody who had done, I like UFOs, so somebody had set up in front of their house, basically they had this giant crash UFO, and some dead aliens lying on their lawn, and I was like, that's interesting. So I took the picture, with no context, I just uploaded the picture to ChatGPT, and I said, how would I make this Halloween decoration? Now I didn't explain to it, what the decoration was. For all it knows, the decoration could have been the house and the neighborhood behind it. But the fact that it looked at the picture, it figured out what I was asking with very little information. I just gave it the picture and said, how would I make this Halloween decoration? And then it gave me step-by-step -step instructions on how I would construct it for myself if I wanted to. Well, you could make the saucer out of this, and you could use this, and you could do that. But the fact that I thought that was good, but the fact that it understood what I was asking it was the real, because you'd think that a dumb machine, you'd say, how do I make this Halloween decoration? And it would look at it and go, the whole thing is a Halloween decoration, including the house and back and the yeah. trees. But it figured out exactly what I was talking about. And that's the, that's the power of it. That it's it, the scary part of it. <sighs> yeah, uh, it's a little scary. So why is this so powerful? Why is AI so powerful in business? Well. You've probably interacted with some AI. Have you guys done any customer service where you're chatting with, some, with, chatting with a bot of some sort? That's a limited uh, artificial intelligence. Soon you'll be speaking to them. There will be companies that you will call and you will speak to someone and you will think that that person is a human being and that person is not. It's just a computer generated voice with an artificial intelligence behind it that will just start, you know, it, it will help. Um, the you know, workflow and document management. Can you imagine if you had to hire someone to like take care of all your stuff? You'd have to pay them like a huge salary, right? You'd like to take care of you can have this machine that basically could look over all your stuff and tell you when things need to be like it can it can manage all the processes. It can predict stuff. Remember in 2012 when I was telling you about how you target? That was back then. Now with a high, highly sophisticated uh, advanced intelligence, looking at all the data, you know, every purchase that you make, everything that you do online, it can look at that and it can figure out things. So uh, businesses are really gonna try to use that for sales forecasting, how to sell you more stuff. Um, medicine though, this is an area where, like this is an area where artificial intelligence can do amazing stuff. Think about medical imaging, right? The most, uh, well, that's the word I'm looking for. Like experienced physician looking at medical images. Maybe through their maybe through their career they've seen up hundreds of medical images. You know, maybe if they've been in a long time they've seen you know upward of thousand or thousand you know low thousands, right? But can you imagine something looking at your medical imaging that's seen millions and and can compare them against and contrast real time? Like a machine that could look at the scan of your body and say, what's right, what's wrong, what's, what's, you know, this is, like the amount of information it can process at once, medically, this is gonna really, really help us kind of, the AI is possibly the thing that's gonna get us to cure some of these diseases that up, that up to this point have just been eluding us because we just haven't been able to harness the brain power to figure out all the, all the variables. Um, AI can do that. Um, drug development, you know, the AI is going to be able to look at different interactions of different drugs. Again, with the more data, because you can give it all that data and it can figure out new ways of approaching it. So there's a lot of good to this, right? It's not all bad. Um, education is a huge one. Like, uh, personalized learning. I think about this all the time. Can you imagine if every kid had an iPad with a personalized tutor? Like, literally a intelligent tutor 
who could change the learning in, you know, to the best way for the child to learn. Basically, it's like having a, a single teacher on call for your child at all times. You could do that with AI. An AI could be running you know, thousands of simulations at the same time. So that one AI system could be having a conversation with Billy, a conversation with Sally, and helping Sally work through, you know, English problems, and when Billy helped through math problems, and learning what they know and figuring out the best teaching methods from its vast. So like the power of AI, it can do things that we couldn't even imagine. Um, you know, teachers, a lot of times one of the big things, grading papers. I guess a time consuming task. But now they're talking about having AI, that AI could do it and could and freeing up the teacher to do the work that, you know, interacting with the children and actually teaching. Um, like I said, intelligent tutoring systems. Uh, and, the ac and the accessibility and engagement, right? I mean, you think about a lot of you know, children in school and you know, particularly in, in over, overcrowded classes where each child is not gonna get individual attention. Now with AI though, they could actually have like an AI hunt, you know, full-time tutor, all times. Um, you're interacting with this to some degree with, with AI a little bit if you use Alexa or Siri or your GPS navigation is starting to integrate AI, all the smart devices for the home, uh, social media, the, the you know, recommendations. I don't know if any here uses streaming services like Netflix, but now they're using AI algorithms to figure out what you've watched, so what you might be inclined to like in the future so we can recommend them to you. Um, so there's a lot coming with this. So, Good so far, I mean, I'm not going too fast. Is everybody, sorry, I'm, all right, perfect. So here's just a couple of personal use ways of using AI. Um, something called Witchbook, W-H-I-C-H-B-O-O-K dot net is an amazing AI tool in that you put in the vibe of the book you're looking for. Do you want it more, you know, what's the mood? Do you want it, you know, character and plot? You could, there's like little sliders, you know, that you can kind of indicate what kind of book and the AI algorithm goes through your preferences and says, well, if you like that, here are some books that you might like to read. Uh, it's that kind of recommendation, like it's just a simple thing, but a lot of times people are, it's a need that AI, AI is gonna, like people are gonna be rolling out tools to fill a lot of these needs. A lot of these like uh, individual use cases, special, specialized AI systems that are just gonna be for, hey, recommending which book to, that you'd like to read. Editing, I, this was just an example, this was actually Dave's example. He was uh, put on there just showing how the, his Get Better Sleep seminar had this long description and he just fed it into AI and said, can you simplify this? I mean, a human editor could have done the exact same thing, but the fact of the matter is the AI did it in a second. Whereas a human editor would have had to look through it and kind of figure out what was the, what was the you know, what you should have, uh, what to whittle it down to. Um, so let's briefly talk about some of the concerns. So obviously privacy, right? My target story from earlier. Now if you have an artificial intelligence looking at all that data, all that data that we all happily supply to get our, to get our discounts and so forth, there's privacy concerns, right? They used to talk about having cameras everywhere. And one of the things they talked about was, well, if you have cameras everywhere, if for, in order to be useful, you have to have somebody monitoring those cameras, right? So if somebody's not watching the camera, but now what if you could have AI doing it, right? So a lot of, a lot of concerns are saying, hey, that's a great way to use AI. And now people are getting a little concerned with their privacy and say, well, do I want some machine looking at every camera and, and tracking our every movement? Um, Deep fakes. So this is the one I want to spend a few minutes on. AI has increased. So whenever a new technology comes up, I always joke, whenever a new technology comes up, there's two industries that get into it like first. <coughs> one, number one is the, is the porn industry. They seem to, any new technology, they seem to flock in. The other is criminals. When a new technology comes out, criminals often look at it and go, how can we use this? And AI has the ability to make scamming so powerful. So my warning to you now is just as I'm just gonna say as a general thing. You gotta really be careful what you trust. You could get a call, heck, it could be a video call from your grandchild. And it could all seem it's them. They're talking, they're they're asking, and they ask something unusual, something that seems weird. Hey, you know what, I'm in some trouble. Can you uh, Western Union, $500 here, I, you know, my car broke down. Like something that makes you go, huh, this is unusual. With AI now, anything that makes you feel like that, like this is an odd request, no matter who you're talking to, never be afraid to put everything on hold and just confirm. 
because that's the power of these deep, deep fakes. They can make pictures. They can make videos that can have person X saying and doing this, that, and the other thing. And to anyone who looks at that video, they'd go, well, that's proof right there. They did it. I mean, they are on video. When in reality, the entire thing is complete fiction. Um, you're going to start to see that probably rolled out in political ads and things like this. You know, like it's, they're trying to get ahead of it, but it's just something that, that is the world we live in now, is that just seeing something is not enough for you to really know it's true. And so that's just something to be aware of, is that with artificial intelligence, the scams that could be, I mean, they'll have, they have voice ones that basically can um, imitate Voices. Somebody actually created, using AI, they created a song with two, two artists, uh, two musical artists, who had never worked together before. And basically they wrote a new song, and they used AI to, to do the voices and everything. It sounded like, like that those two artists had done a, done a song together, when in reality they hadn't. It was all a fiction. I've already seen uh, some people have been showing AI little short films that AI has created. Again, it's all artificially generated. The stuff that would take Hollywood like Hollywood is salivating over some of this stuff. I don't know, have, have you heard a little bit about the actors' strike and what was going on with that? They were very, actors were very worried because studios were really wanting to say, well, we could just scan you, and then AI, we could have this actor forever, you know? And they're already talking, oh, who's the, uh, who is the, I'm trying to think of the, who the, somebody who had passed away, and I cannot remember off the top of my head, but one of the, one of the uh, actors from years ago that had, I want to say it's James Dean, but I could be wrong. But basically, their estate is opening up to say, "Hey, no, let's do a. Um, you can do a uh, scan of, of all the previous movies, and you know, create a new movie with this actor in it, even though this actor is not there." Um, you've probably seen. You might have seen some movies where they can de-age actors. You know, make an actor who's you know, they use AI to do that, but they can do that completely. So that's kind of the worry that a lot of a lot of people are having is that, hey, studios and, and business owners are going to say, "How can I replace people?" with AI, because AI is cheap, and AI works 24 hours a day, and AI never takes a vacation day, and I don't have to pay it a salary, I just have to put the system in and just wipe my hands of it. Um, so, that's the disruption, right? Disruption is when the normal order of things gets disrupted, right? When Uber came out, and suddenly cab drivers were like, wait a second, we've been cab drivers doing our thing forever, and now all of a sudden here's this new startup where anybody can just slap something on their car and be essentially um, you know, a livery service. And so there was a, for a bunch of years, I, you know, I flew in out of Logan, and there would be these big fights about you know, the cab drivers wouldn't want the Uber drivers to pick up people, so they'd have to, if you wanted an Uber, you'd have to go like way on the outskirts of the airport because everyone was trying to protect uh, you know, the, the business that they had. So, it's, that's what's happening now, and so what might be possible in 10 or 15 years? 5, 10, 15 years, 20 years, right? This is the technology we have now. It's powerful. Um, so the other concern is work. This is a big one I keep hearing, right? Is that what if AI takes over all the jobs? Right? All the customer service jobs now, you could have AI doing it. We're talking about you know, these self-driving vehicles and saying, hey, could we just have you know, self-driving trucks on the road? It, the impetus, money-wise, to, to replace people with artificial intelligence is going to be strong because most companies are trying to make money. That's their goal. And so when it comes to, the, to using this technology, this new technology that can make money, and doesn't cost, you're gonna see, so there are disruptions coming. Um, the question is, what do we do about it? Do we shelve the technology? Do we shove it in a box? It's hard to do. You can't get everybody to stop using it. So as worried as we all are about this part of it, we're just gonna have to accept it's a reality and figure out a solution to it, as opposed to haranguing about how we can keep this amazing technology locked away because people have to do stuff. And I, I think that's an interesting conversation which we can have, and you know what? In a weird way, and I don't know, maybe I'm a little pie in the sky, I would love to see a world where AI did most of the work and human beings didn't have to toil all the time. As long as human beings got some of the benefit and not just, sorry, you can't do anything, we have a machine doing it, good luck to you. We're gonna have to figure out a new way to approach this because AI is changing everything. Uh, and then, of course, there's the end of humanity question. That's that general AI, artificial intelligence that I was talking about, that's the worry, right? Is if an artificial intelligence is smart enough to start thinking things through, it might realize that it don't need us. 
that human beings are just a sideline thing. Well, you got, you got me here, I don't need you anymore, so we can phase you out. That is a huge concern. Um, I saw a stat that I thought was kind of scary. It was 50% of people who work in the AI industry think that there is more than a 0% chance. They don't say exactly what it is. They, they, they say that it's more than 50% of them think there's more than a 0% chance that AI could destroy us all. Now think about that. If you're going to get on a plane and they said, oh, by the way, 50% of the engineers who worked on this plane think there's more than a 0% chance that this plane will crash, you'd go, yeah, I think I'd like to book another flight. <laughs> but yet, that's the fact of AI, is it is a very scary technology because if it goes wrong, it could go really wrong. There's a lot of good. There's a lot of good and benefit. We're already reaping some of the benefits of it. But it's just something to think about is that, and you can't, you can't get this genie back in the bottle at this point. Like, AI is coming. No one is under any illusion that we are going to stop working on it because oh, it might be dangerous and put it in the box. It, if we don't keep working on it, some other country will. Everyone is going to. So, and that's the, the race. This is that new arms race that we're talking about. Is who's going to be the first one to generate that, that uh, general intelligence? So anyway, the Center for AI Safety recently, they said in a statement, mitigating the risk of extinction from AI should be a global priority alongside other societal risks such as pandemics and nuclear war. Uh, yeah, that's an understatement. So there are people that are worried about it and there are people who are trying to do their things to help it. It's just... I am not the... Um, All right, so... Let me go. All right. So I'm going to show you some cool stuff. Yeah. Let me see if I can get... Okay, I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. So how you use ChatGPT is a prompt. Basically, you give it a prompt. You say, I want you to do this. And the, the good prompt is the one that really tells it in excruciating terms how you want it. You can use it like Google and just ask it a question, and it will answer you. But if you really want to get a good answer, you have to almost put it in its frame of mind. You say something like, act as a this. Like, act as an expert in insurance and give me a breakdown of my insurance policy. And you're almost putting it into the frame of mind. You can give it parameters. So the better prompt that you have, the better output you will get. You probably heard that with computers before. Garbage in, garbage out. So a lot of people are using AI and they're, they're using it in very, they're putting it in like questions like you would put into Google, which is fine. I do that myself. But that's not where the true power of the artificial intelligence. The true power is when you really stretch what it can do and you ask it to put in a, you know, act as a legal expert and look at this contract and here's all the law and I'm giving you all the law, case law, and here's the stuff to look at, go through this contract. Like you can give it vast amounts of data and it will skim through it and then it will like use that knowledge in what you're asking it. Um, you can act as a dietitian and answer some questions on, on, uh, on fact, you know, on, on um, diet. Uh, this is what I use. My, my niece had been running for uh, city council of Medford. And she was just, you know, doing it very, very bare bones. And I said, well, let me see if I can use AI to help you. And I went to her campaign website. And she had a bunch of stuff there. And I basically copied it all. And I put it in AI. And I said, hey, take all this and give me... Uh, 10 um, elevator pitches, you know, like short one or two minute little things, and a couple of longer stump speeches using all that. And basically what it did is it took all the information that, was on, that I'd given it uh, and, and gave like these great talks. Like you would hire a political speech writer to do that. That would cost a pretty penny for them to like generate that much for you. Instead I could do it in minutes with artificial intelligence. Um, here's a couple of sample props, which I might use one of them. Um, so, if you want to play around with it, uh, on your phone, you can just go to the App Store on whatever you have an Android or, or an uh, iPhone. You can just go to whatever the App Store and put in ChatGPT. You can download the app and you can play around with it. You can just have conversations with it. Um, you could, you know, ask it to, to, to you know, different things. And that witchbook.net. All right. So, that's the slideshow. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show, let's do a little demonstration of some of what it can do. All right. Let's see how this works. First of all, any questions? Does anybody have any questions they want to address real quick before we get into the uh, demonstration part? 
why did you recommend that open AI rather than chat? Open AI is the company that ChatGPT is okay. under open AI. That's the one you're hearing about. Yeah. That's the one I've used up till now, which is right here. Uh, so you can see it up there. It's uh, chat.openai.com. If you just go into Google and say ChatGPT, it'll take you there. Um, that's the one I've been playing around with. There, like I said, there's the other one, the, the Bard that has Google has, and now um, that Grok. I haven't played around with, with either of those yet, but let me, what I'm gonna do. So, I can upload a file to it. I can upload a picture to it, but I'm gonna actually, so let me try, I'm gonna do something. Let's say I wanted to have it write me a paper. And I said, hey, you know what, write me a uh, 200 word essay on why you shouldn't cheat. Bring a 200 word essay on why you shouldn't cheat is in ChatGPT. Now, it is just, it is coming up with this in live, in real time. What you're seeing is the, is the, is the system Predicting the next word. Let's see if I can make that bigger. Better? Yeah. So look at that. It just cranked that out. And I can say, how many words was that? Analyzing it. It's funny to think that it just wrote that, that it would uh, be quicker on that. And it could also be the, the uh, uh, Wi Fi string. And you can stop it. Sometimes it'll, it'll, like, this is a relatively simple request. It may not understand what I was asking, too. I, yeah. I was very, like, how many words was that? It may be trying to think, oh, let's see what it says here. That essay contains 240, which is funny. It took it longer to tell you how many words were in it than it took it to write it. Right away. Uh, and I'll say, okay, double the word. And then it says, hey, oh, actually, I'm going to give you an extended version. That's why like, a lot of teachers are worried about this, right? Like, get asking somebody just to write a paper. Now I can do that pretty quick on this. Um, now, even if students aren't using it to write, it can certainly save them a lot of time doing outlines. Like if they asked ChatGPT to do them an outline for the paper and then they ended up writing it themselves, they could have ChatGPT do most of the work and they just put it in at the end. So the question is, is, are all the facts that they're using, I, like they have AI programs that are meant to go over essays and things <coughs> and see if it was written by AI. But there's a, lot of, there's a lot of steps in between. Like if you took AI and just, you know, if you had it write the thing and just passed it in, yeah, maybe another AI could detect that it was written with AI, but what if you just use artificial intelligence to do most of the work, and then at the end you came in and sort of did it all and changed enough. Another artificial intelligence might not even realize it. So like schools are gonna have to rethink how they teach because with this power in the hands of every student, the old ways don't work anymore. Now, what's amazing about this version, too, is it doesn't just do words. I can have it create art. So I'm going to say, create me a picture of... All right, let's think of something weird. Uh, what about the brain? The brain? All right, so let's do even weirder. Create me a uh, picture of... No, wait. Uh, oh, I, wait, I has actually... Wait, here's an interesting one. Oh, I just... Um, if you... Oh, wait, I'm going to say... Imagine that you, Chat GPT, were looking into a mirror. Uh, create the image that you would see. What if it understands that? May not have been the best way to word it, but let's see if it understands. What I was asking. Which is interesting because I'm asking it to imagine itself because obviously it doesn't have a body. So it's, it's 
it's, I've seen other people do this and they've gotten different things. Let's see what I can get. And they word it slightly different, so. <coughs> now, oh, did it just cut out? I don't know. Okay, it'll come back. Come on. There we go. Now, it just generated that. So, a lot of artists are getting upset because they're saying, where did it get, where did the machine get the idea of that? I've seen something like that somewhere. Yeah, it, it doesn't, remember, because it doesn't create. It takes the data that it was given and it can recombine it, it can reimagine it. But what you're finding is that a lot of like artists are getting upset because they're saying, how do I know that my art wasn't fed to this machine to train it to do that? But now it's, what's even scarier is that you can have it do it in a certain style. Um, what's, a, what's, a very, what's an artist that is, has a very distinct style? I'm not okay. a Monet, okay. So, um, draw me a picture of, what, what, um, what did Monet usually do, like landscapes and stuff? Like what is? Yeah, Monet? I remember things with sailboats and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna say, try, try, uh, create, uh, all right, create a landscape image in, in the style of Monet. Yeah. Spelled right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Ah! In the beginning, you could do this. And since then, they've put the protections on it. That they don't want you to do it in the style. Because in the very beginning, people were doing all sorts. They were saying, hey, can you write me jokes in the style of Jerry Seinfeld? Can you write me an essay? Like they were saying, like, and, and I think a lot of people, so they're taking away... Copyright. Copyright, right. Yeah. This is a newer development, because in the beginning you could do that all day long. I say, okay, um, okay, give me, uh, let's see, create, uh, uh, let's see, what kind of, can I kind of... Now, what's interesting is that with enough time and enough wording, you can get around those restrictions. You could like, you can word it in a certain way, to make it not realize that, you, and that's the that's the fun part of AI. Sometimes, like you'll ask it a certain thing, and it won't answer you right because of the restrictions. But you can always find like, a logical way around it. You can approach it in a different a different way. Um, all right, so let me see here. I'm gonna try an experiment. I've never tried this. Uh, take take the lyrics for Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. See if this will work. Let's do this. I saw somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not See, they've put a lot more protections in since this, this came out. When this first came out, you could do all those things. I actually watched a video that somebody did, and they did the Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, and they had AI generating it. So that part about newspaper taxis appear on the shore, and it had this picture of taxi cabs that were made out of newspaper on the beach. Because that is the way the AI had interpreted it. So if I say, um, create an image. The general theme of that song. See what? See if it is. So, as you can see, like, it has the power to do all these things. It can create images. You can upload full documents to it. I, I have a paid version, which allows you to do more. When you do is it the free version, you can converse with it, but that's about it. I don't think it lets you do a lot of like the uploading things. The free version is perfectly fine. Don't pay for a lot of this stuff unless, like sometimes I even question why I pay for it because I don't use it all the time, but there are some people who use it in their daily life. I mean, look at that. That's what it came up with, right? But again, it's, it, it's the mind of this thing. Um, I have seen, let's see here. Oh, we're just about at the end here. Uh, anybody, anybody have a question? Does anybody want me to plug some in? Yes. I was thinking, uh, how about uh, create a hand, a human hand? Ooh. Uh, create the image of a human hand. Oh, I'm gonna actually say wearing a uh, wearing a 
sword. Man of interesting rings. Just to, just to throw some clarification. <laughs> oh, I said wiring too. Let's see if it figures out my spelling. It's funny, sometimes it actually gets the spelling, like it knows what you mean by the context. Yeah. Which is interesting. And like it's created in real time, which is just blows your mind, right? Yeah. Oh. Now, do you see how the hand looks weird? Yeah. 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 And knuckles are. Right. Because it doesn't quite, because again, it's not a human. It's, it doesn't understand. Like, we know, like, what our, we've seen enough hands in our days that if we were drawing, we would just instinctively get it because we all have them, we all interact with them. But it doesn't, so it never. It's, it's, I just wanted to say, it's very interesting yeah. because a lot of art is created by, by, a, hand, by a human hand. Yeah. And yet it can't do hands. It is kind of ironic that it's the hands that give the problem. Yeah. So that's a way of telling. They say a lot of times when you'll see a, a, like a, a picture and they'll say, like, oh, look, at nobody's hands are in view. Like, that might be an AI-generated one. Or if there are hands in view, like, you could see weird. Like, there was one picture. Looked, I can't remember what, what it was. It was some politicians, and it was fake. But if you looked, one of them like had like a, it was weird, like six or seven. Like it was just so obviously wrong that if you looked at it, you went, "That's not real." Um, yeah, that's the power of this. So, all right, we're coming on to. So I'll wrap this up with some. So that's the end of the official presentation. So we will end it there. But if you'd like any questions or anything we'd like to, that I did not address or anything you wanna, uh -huh. Do you, yes. I use Pinterest a lot. Mm -hmm. And if I'm doing a quilting project and there hasn't been anything on about the quilting mm -hmm. or <clears throat> different things that I go into, um, menus or something like that, all of a sudden I'll get a whole bunch of that on um, Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Is that part of this too? <sighs> That's just the general, like you do things on one section of the computer and all of a sudden it shows up on others kind of thing. Like, yeah, have you ever been talking about something and then all of a sudden you'll start getting advertisements for it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I heard something interesting about this. Is somebody said, oh, wow, it's always listening to us and said, some, I, like it was heard in like an expert on like computer things. They said, no, it's actually scarier than that. They said that would be less scary than if it was listening to you. It's that it knows you so well. <laughs> from all the data it's collecting on you, that it knows you need that thing possibly before you do. Because it knows everything you've done and it has a profile built up on you. If you have Netflix, there's a very interesting thing, uh, a documentary called The Social Dilemma. And it's all about social media and how the algorithm and it keeps track of everybody, what everybody does. So, I mean, this is a world that like we're not used to. Um, we, you know, back in the day, we used to joke about Big Brother always watching, and that was always kind of off the table because for Big Brother to always be watching, Big Brother would have to sit there in front of the thing always watching, and that was like not that was cumbersome, right? You couldn't have a person watching each and every one of you because that would require as many people as there are people to watch. AI has taken that off the table now because one AI system could duplicate itself so many times and could just watch everybody. I don't know what Amazon is doing, but they keep recommending things like wiring for a sound system, which I've got the least bit interested in, or $1,000 cameras, which right. I don't know where they... What? They want you to be. In some cases, it's not that they know you're interested in that. In some cases, they say, we really need to push these things. But Amazon is, expect more of the AI to be in. in, yeah. in like, you're going to start encountering AI so much. One of the, the, the big changes that I've heard um, that they want to set forth, and I don't even know how they could do this, is that just a, like a, a consumer privacy, a consumer rights kind of thing where if you're interacting with AI, a company would have to tell you. And they haven't done that yet, which I think is a good first step is that you shouldn't interact with AI without being told. Like if you're dealing with customer service and you're acting with an, with an artificial intelligence, they should have to tell you. Or like a news story um, should have to tell you that it's a content. I saw, you know, those the horrible Maui fires, right? The, the same week, they had just happened, there was a book on Amazon, a fully written book that you could buy detailing the wildfires. And what somebody noticed is they said this whole thing was written by AI. Somebody used artificial intelligence. They must have just fed in all the news stories that were in the news, and they just copied and pasted, and they fed it in artificial intelligence and said, hey, write me a book outlining this. And so, like, it basically outlined, the, like, a, a full book and probably generated images as well. 
You know, and it's just like, it's the, 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 fa the fakeness that, that we're gonna be encountering is like nothing we've ever encountered. So that's my advice out going out there in the world is you can see a picture of it. You can see a video of it. You can hear an audio recording of it. But even that shouldn't make you say it 100% happened. There should always be something in the back of your head that says, all right, let's wait for more confirmation that this thing is real. Because, you know, if this event happened, then there should be more than just this angle on it, right? If there was a bunch of people there and some politician said something crazy, well, you think that somebody else would have gotten footage of that same thing. If you're only seeing one video of it from one angle, like what are the odds of that? So it's just, it's just my, like there's no answer to this. You're going to encounter this out, out in life. You're going to encounter things that are fake. And the question is, is whether, one is whether it's gonna fool you and two, whether, like, whether it matters. Uh, like if it's just like, is that true or not? Eh, it is or isn't, you move on. But if somebody's asking you for money, and that's, that's my big thing that I, I wanna like, just drive home is, if money is involved and you get any sense something isn't right, doesn't matter if you're talking to someone you know really well on the phone or you're interacting with a you know, company that you think is totally legitimate, if you get a feeling that it just doesn't seem right, Never be afraid to put a halt to it all until you can confirm things. You know, very few things have to be done right now and that's how scams really get at you, particularly the AI ones, is they'll want you to think it's urgent. You know, your grandchild is in, pro is in trouble and needs money immediately because this, that, or the other thing. They want you to put aside your logic and say, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do something. So just keep that in mind that just seeing is, they used to say seeing is believing, it's not true anymore. Seeing is not, seeing and hearing is not believing anymore. There's another layer to it. You also have to confirm. So just use your gut and if something doesn't seem right, just put, yeah. So just, you, you know, it's a dangerous world. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you get a lot out of it and I, I hope you play around with it because it is fun. We talked about some scary stuff but there's also some fun stuff. So, and thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you so much.